How are you? Very well, thank you. I am very well, thank you. Welcome to Kruger National Park. Thank you very much. I'm driving in the northern parts of the Kruger National Park and my story is about a tree an endangered tree. It's listed as threatened. As a matter of fact, it is so threatened due to poaching that they've now brought ex-game rangers back from retirement to come and help guard the tree seven days a week. But that's not what my story is about. My story is about a new experiment they're about to conduct and that is to bring in a sniffer dog in the hope that this dog will be able to help us find even more colonies of this very very special tree. Valburgia salutaris, or as the common name goes, the pepper bark tree. <laughs> Early morning on day one. First, the rangers receive more new bicycles sponsored by Sappy to help them on their daily pepper bark patrols. And then we're off. The trees are in a remote part of the park off the beaten track, and we have to go on foot from here on. Meet Faust, the star of the day. He used to sniff out cheetah scat for a living, but Rox has been retraining him to try and point out pepper box. But that was done with saplings in old days, and this is his first visit to the park and also to the real McCoy. First, the rangers who guard these trees from the poachers will take us to a known group of trees, so that we can see if Faust can indeed find them amidst all the new smells and the excitement of being in a strange wilderness. It is quite a long walk before the rangers signal that we have indeed reached pepper bark territory. Is it this one? Is this one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because Faust can't speak and is so excited, it is hard to tell if he realizes why we are all staring at him and at this inconspicuous little tree. Now we've been working just with, uh, with, very, with just very few samples, so at the moment what I want to do is just um, make sure that he knows exactly what it is that we're looking for. He works for the ball, not for love of trees or anything like that. He works, he finds ways to get the ball. Okay, well let's see if we can find them. There's, some, there's two down there. Do you think if we walk down there you can find yeah. them? Well, let's give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> Which direction am I headed? Michel Hofmeyer runs this Kukuza nursery and is also the Warburgia project leader. And with a little help from his friend, Faust does find a smallish Warburgia. Well, sort of. We think. By late morning, Faust is overheating and it is time for him to retire for the day. But Rock seems happy with the way things have gone. It went well. It was actually, it was pretty much as we expected that um, that we've been training on uh, on samples in in bags and in quite a different environment. We're in a, in, a, in a much drier environment, so they stand out uh, a lot more. Um, and where the trees are much bigger, we were uh, we had little saplings, so we expected there to be uh, a bit a, a bit of a, a jump between. Uh, between these small trees in an environment where they stand out and then suddenly big trees which are generating a lot more scent and the scent is much more diffuse from the big trees particularly as it gets hotter the scent spreads and spreads and spreads so it actually uh, it's almost like a cloud of scent so the dog can't pinpoint it as well as they can early in the morning and with it's a lot more scent so the first day of training in the field was meant to be about showing him some of these, showing him the, uh, the bigger trees and showing exactly what it is and uh, actually encouraging and or letting him know that that's, that it, that's what we're looking for as well and that the, the bigger scent and the more scent and it is actually what we're looking for. And uh, from what, what we've seen now with the amount of, of uh, the scent that is, is around them and uh, the difficulty in pinpointing, we think that we probably need to actually train more directly onto the bark rather than, uh, than onto the leaves. In the afternoon, while Faust is resting in the camp, 
we soldier on to one of the pepper bark communities that has been hit hardest by the poachers. These shiny leaves belong to the pepper bark tree. But now if you look at the bark itself, you'll see that it's missing because this tree has been harvested by the poachers. And this is one of the more recent attacks. This happened in January 2014. And the reason why this clump of pepper box over here has been targeted by the harvesters is actually quite simple. If I look just on the other side of this hill from where I'm standing, I can see where the people are. Now, keep in mind that they don't have these trees on their side anymore and they need them for medicine. So, one plus one, unfortunately, makes two. At the top, wherever you see nice clean lines on the bark, yeah. then it means it's been harvested. Harvested, yeah. And then it's grown back again. But it's really a very robust uh, grower, coppice. And even when the, the roots seem to come to the surface and they get you know, scratched yeah. by a buffalo or whatever, then it will coppice again. They're it's really amazing, very, very robust. But, and that's what actually saves them, because where the bark has been stripped off, then they just grow from the base, you see? Yeah. Day two, and Faust has joined our ranks again. As we are walking, I can't help but wonder whether I'm the only one secretly wondering if today will be the day. After a long trek through the bushveld, we finally reach a clump of pepper box, but we don't tell Faust about it. Again, we're in a cloud of it, so there's trees behind you and trees here, and so there's a lot of the scent around, so it's hard for him to pinpoint exactly where it is. He knows, he's reacting and he knows it's here somewhere. But uh, it's hard for him to pinpoint an exact scent because there's trees, there's trees, yeah, all around. So there's uphill, downhill. So he knows he's in it, but he just, it's hard for him to say, this is the tree. And that is pretty much that. Before the next hike that afternoon, we learned from rocks that fast hurt his paw and won't be joining us again for the remainder of the trip. But back at the camp, he does show us that at least he can find the little bagged saplings with which he was trained. For rocks, it means back to the drawing board. It would need more field work. There's no, not much else we can do at, at home. Uh, it would need, I, probably I would want another couple of, couple of weeks in the field. At least, if nothing else, Faust has pointed out the wisdom Sandparks and Sappy had in bringing retired rangers back and equipping them to look after the pepper box. Their knowledge of the felt has proven invaluable in finding previously unknown communities of pepper box, marking them and then safeguarding them from the pressures outside the park. It seems that if the dog is going to work, and that is a big if, it will definitely take a lot more time. And also, even though the project is doing well inside Kruger, they've located a lot more trees, the poaching has gone down since the guards are there, all of this will be useless unless in some way we can address the problem at its roots. That is, outside the park where the need exists for the bark of this tree. And the good news is that this is exactly what is happening. Sandparks, Sapi, the Botanical Garden in Mobela and the Agricultural Research Institute have all joined forces to try and come up with a proactive plan for outside the park. But that is next time's story.